I started this channel and I quote myself here, shooting and reviewing two cameras a month in search of the one that will slay my gas and make me whole. So the problem is like I'm six months into this channel and I think I found my camera. Like I think this is that camera. And if you got the notification for this video and were like, oh yeah, I forgot about that channel, you wouldn't be blamed. It's been a hot minute. Um, but we are back to talk about my long, epic, and well overdue review of the Sigma Quattro. I always do this wrong. The Sigma SD Quattro H. Let's just get some specs cleared uh, because this is not going to be a spec heavy review. If you have not watched my Sigma DP Quattro 2, DP2 Quattro video, guys, the Sigma naming is very challenging to keep up with. But if you haven't watched that review already, I recommend going to see that because if you're really interested in specs, I get into a, a bit more of the menu system, all that. It is the same, essentially. The DNA is pretty much identical outside of the form factor. So go click through there if you wanna get deeper into the specs. This is a 45 megapixel APS-H Foveon Quattro sensor. This is a mouthful. It's CMOS based, but it's stacked. So it's a three layer sensor, and this is kind of what makes Foveon unique and different from the rest of the market, Bayer, um, X-Trans, what have you. This mount itself is really, I don't know why they did this to be honest, because it's a mirrorless camera, right? So you have the sensor in here. The mount itself is very chunky. And uh, as a result of this being so shallow in depth, there aren't a lot of adapters that you can use on this. I believe you can mount M42 lenses to this, and that is pretty much it unless you go in and modify the lenses. So I've heard K mount for Pentax is very close to the SA mount, but the pins will actually mess with your sensor. So you have to like kind of irreparably damage it and it won't work on Pentax anymore. So that's kind of a drag. It does limit your uh, lens options because you do have to go with the Sigma SA mount lenses from Sigma. That being said, they are so ridiculously good, these lenses, that I have four, and I'll show you all of them. I will never need another lens. Like, they are badass lenses. They're so good. The camera shoots JPEG. Uh, it shoots X3F RAW, which is a proprietary Sigma format that can really only, I mean, it can be read by some other programs, but Really, you wanna work probably in Sigma Photo Pro with that. There is a plugin for Photoshop, but I use Sigma Photo Pro and I'll kind of talk about why. Uh, it shoots DNG files that can be read by pretty much anything, Lightroom, Capture One, whatever. Uh, and it shoots RAW plus JPEG, which is great. I use the X3F plus JPEG. I kind of cull through my JPEGs because the X3F files are very large. And then I make my selects based on JPEGs, find the corresponding x3f file and then have a selects folder where i edit those sounds clunky it is clunky but it kind of leans into the experience of why i love this camera it has a bunch of aspect ratios so 
21 by 9, so that's the Hasselblad X-Pan ratio, which you don't see in almost any other cameras. The Fuji GFX actually has that as well. Uh, Sigma came out with that early. This is 2017 that this camera was released. And it has 16.9, of course, 3243, 6x7, which is a format or aspect ratio that I have not seen in any other cameras that I absolutely love having in this camera. And of course, one by one. The other thing that's really nice is the X3F files, raw files, when you pull them into Sigma Photo Pro, show up as cropped if you are shooting in that crop mode. Uh, so it's not just in JPEGs, it is baked into the raw, but then you can always change back to the full 2-3 aspect ratio. It is natively 2-3. It also has super fine detail mode, which is called for short SFD in the menus. And that is an exposure mode that will take seven uh, bracketed images essentially and blend them into one raw file that is absolutely massive and sometimes crashes my computer. You know, it's kind of like HDR, but it does it very smoothly with like a lot of, I would say sophistication and I have been really impressed by the output of that. I have not used it a lot. It's something I want to dig into more, uh, but I have been really impressed with the outcome that I've seen from that, uh, from that mode, and it definitely gives you more detail as well. It takes SD cards for memory. It has, you know, focus peaking, punch into magnify, so it's like makes manual focus a lot easier on this, which you're gonna need because the autofocus is not bad on this. It's mediocre. Uh, it's worse with some lenses than others, like the 30 millimeter f1.4 is, the autofocus is kind of garbage, and the 18 to 35, it actually works pretty well, but I definitely wouldn't rely on it wholeheartedly, so it's really nice to have those manual focus uh, assists, and I use them frequently, but it has a lot of those kinds of like nice practical features, but there's no video, there's no like bells and whistles, no GPS or anything like that. It seriously struggles with skin tones, so it's a challenging portrait camera, although like it can also be a really wonderful portrait camera. It struggles with high dynamic range situations, so like super bright light. I live in California, like this is not the camera I should probably be shooting with, but I love it, so I do. It's big and heavy. Um, the lens, you know, mount and system are semi-limited. Uh, the EVF and life of the battery is pretty poor. It's like fine, it's mediocre, but like it's not great. And the raw files I like to work with, the X3F files, are completely reliant on Sigma maintaining their platform to develop those images. Like I'm sure I could work with the DNGs, but I just have found that I've really clicked with Sigma Photo Pro, which is such an ironic statement. Um, but there's just basically a lot of things that I can't recommend this camera for, but there are so many things that I love about it that dwarf the imperfections or the negatives. So I love the sound of the shutter. Let's just take a listen. I'm gonna put it in manual. I just love it. I love it. It's just like, just delicious. It's a delicious sound. Um, I love the viewfinder. Um, it's not because the EVF is the best, it's not, uh, but it has, you know, auto, so you eye detect for the EVF going between the screen and the EVF. You can also change your display so that you have, um, I'm on manual, so this is also gonna be really, but you can change your display, and then if you turn your display completely off, and you have this wonderful little sub monitor which shows you all of the values that you actually need to know and then you can turn that off too and then it's just clean and it's just like shooting a regular film camera um and okay so i love that i love that it has the level i think i probably said that already i love the aspect ratios i shoot 7 6 and 21 19 or no 21 9 almost exclusively so like a pentax 6 7 format and an Hasselblad X-Pan X -Pan format, essentially. It just works for me. It also works for these lenses. So this is the 18 to 35. I also have the behemoth of a lens, the 50 to 100. Freaking brilliant lenses, you guys. These 
lenses are worth the system alone, in my opinion. And these are actually made for APS-C size sensors, but they do work on the H. The corners will be a little soft. There will be a little bit of vignette. I will paste a whole, uh, a link in the show notes to a whole review that gets into the way these perform on the H. But for me, I don't shoot in the native three to aspect ratio, so I don't even ever see those corners, non-issue. So I just adore these, and if I never bought another lens, I mean, I think I could live completely 100% off of the 18 to 35. I pull this bad boy out when I'm going out hiking, if you can believe it, because it's massive and it's super heavy, but totally worth it for me. Uh, I pull it out for landscapes or portraits or whatever. It's it's a, call it a 15% of the time lens, and this is like an 85% of the time lens. Um, you, you have these two and you never need anything else. They're amazing. And my favorite thing at the end of the day is the image quality. I have yet to find anything that rivals the experience and the output, the final images in likeness to film. Uh, but I really think the output and the image quality of these are just ridiculous like there's so much detail they're so sharp but they're not digital they don't feel digital to me they really do feel filmic so i shoot this camera with four lenses like i sort of started to allude to the 18 to 35 1.8 workhorse my daily driver like this is on the body almost all the time then i complement that with this large 50 to 100 telephoto. Then I have the 30 millimeter 1.4 that came with it. This is just a lovely, like it's much smaller. It's the smallest lens that they have for this system as far as I'm aware. And it's great. It's a good solid performer, not great for autofocus. It kind of misses the focus fairly frequently, but it's a really good lens. And it's just kind of a nice one to have in the kit. I don't think I would have bought it, you know, if it hadn't come with the camera. But now that I have it, I'm really happy to have it because it is nice to just walk around with something a little smaller sometimes because even the 18 to 35 is oversized. And then the last lens is one I just added to my collection, fresh from a lovely human in Germany. Um, and this is the 12 to 24 millimeter F4 lens. This thing is ridiculous. I didn't realize how giant it was but look at this bulbous element i mean this thing is enormous and it's heavy but i specifically got this lens for the 21 9 aspect ratio because i just wanted to get as much of the environment as i could into like that nice pano vibe and this thing is sharp constant f4 like it's a beast it's a full frame lens so this is bigger because it is you know going to fit a larger sensor, um, which is going to be nice if and when that Foveon full frame ever comes out. Uh, these other lenses won't work on that, but this one will. So that's my lens collection. I do recommend a tripod with this system, although I don't take my own advice because I never use a tripod with this system. I do shoot fully manual with this camera. That is not to say that the automated you know, modes don't work. They work great, like aperture priority, shutter speed priority program mode, they all work fantastic, no issues. Like if you wanna shoot it that way, do it. I think of this as my experience camera, so I do like shooting it fully manual because it just gets me in the vibe, gets me in the mood. But I also really think you can maximize the potential of this camera in manual. So um, I shoot, I mean, it's auto white balance, I shoot at ISO 100. I lock it off there pretty much always. And with these 1.8 lenses, like that's never really an issue. Sometimes, like I did take some photos out on a bluff one evening when it was really, the light had gotten really dark and I was shooting like 400 and then I went up to 800. I'll do it, I'll push it there. It does limit sort of how much you can bend and stretch the files, uh, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's totally manageable. But if I'm gonna go through the trouble of shooting this camera, I'm going to get the absolute maximum that I can out of it, which is going to be at ISO 100. So I just keep it there. I shoot evaluative metering, unless there's like a really specific situation where I need spot metering. 
and then I am using that exposure mode to shift my aperture and shutter values. I watch my live histogram. I like bring it all the way to clipping and then I push it back just so that the highlights are just below clip and I'm really maximizing the histogram to get as much information in there as possible unless I don't mind the whites blowing. Like there are circumstances where that makes sense. Um, but that's kind of how I shoot this camera. So I'm really not paying attention to how it looks in the EVF. And I think that's really important because the EVF is not great. Pay attention to the histogram, keep your whites from clipping, and you will have a lot of information to work with in your X3F files if you choose to shoot that way. It would be the same with a DNG, um, but my workflow is gonna be specific to X3F because that's how I choose to shoot. And that's it, like it's dead simple. I shoot this so simply, and that's what I love about this camera. It is simple. All the buttons I need are on the body. I don't have to dig through menus. The quick menu is super, it's really actually the only thing I use. I go into the quick menu, I have my aspect ratio in there, my metering, um, evaluative spot, whatever, my mode, P mode, manual mode, whatever. And that's it. Like it is stupid simple. And I just am so refreshed by that. Like even going back to my EM1 5 Mark III from Olympus, a camera that I love, I was like, oh, I can't find anything. It's not on the body. Like that just, I just love how simple this camera is. So the crazy thing about this camera is this mount does allow for this IR filter to be right here and you can just pop it out and then pop it back in. No IR conversion needed. And then you can shoot infrared photography. photography. <laughs> um, and that is something I'm really excited to try. I just haven't gotten to it yet. Like I've barely gotten to SFD. So that's next on the list, but uh, I just think that's ridiculously awesome that you can just like take that out and then pop it back in and you have a completely different camera that you would normally have to pay, you know, a sizable chunk of money to get a different camera converted to that you can never reverse. Um, so if I had to choose one camera from my entire collection and could only have that one camera and one lens, it would be the Sigma SD Quattro H with the 18 to 35 millimeter lens. And I can't even believe that I'm saying that. Like there are some real challenges to this camera. Like I mentioned, the skin tones are really hard. Like I haven't mastered that and it's something I'm working on. And I wanna take great portraits with this camera because I absolutely love how it renders. And it's like, it's just delightful. But I'm working through that. Like I haven't figured it out yet. And I sometimes get results I like and I sometimes don't. And working with this indoors is challenging. Like there's not always enough light and it's got a weird way of rendering oranges. Like it's not, it's got like red in the oranges. It's not how I ideally want my oranges to look, but like I'm working through it. I'm figuring it out and I'm learning it in Sigma Photo Pro. And that is the experience of shooting this camera. But there's a whole other video that has to be made to round this out because half of this thing is just in the post-processing. And so I am gonna do a whole other video where I take you on a day of shooting with me and we go through soup to nuts how I manage my files. Hi, sweet girl. Did you just wake up? Oh, hi, monkey. Oh. Well, so that's that camera. Um, but we have some unfinished business still to take care of which comes from my last video. So my six month anniversary video, I announced that I would be giving away uh, one of my oldest and uh, at the time favorite cameras, the Kodak Easy Share V530. So let's cut to the selection of whoever won that camera. We're gonna just pick a random comment here. So let's put Spencer, this is awesome. I already know your address because I've already shipped you a camera that you purchased on the site. So thank you very much. And I'm psyched that you're going to uh, get to experience this V530. It was such a, a, a great camera for me back in the day and um, should be hopefully a lot of fun for your family as well. Okay, so I also asked on Instagram if you had any questions about this camera. So I'm gonna do my best to answer what I received. So first, is it worth buying to get that film vibe? I mean, for me, I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, 100%, I love it. Would I buy the 
SD or the SD Quattro H. That, I haven't shot the SD standard. I can't imagine that there's that much of a difference, to be honest. And it is definitely not a cheap camera when you're looking at the H. Like, they go anywhere from $1,000 for the body up to, like, I don't know, $1,500 i have seen on eBay or whatever. I would probably, if I were to do it all over again, just get the SD. I'm sure it's going to be, like, equally capable. I just, I just went for the H because I'm insane and I went deep down this, like, Sigma phobia and rabbit hole and I just went like hardcore which I tend to do if you hadn't noticed so um when I fall in love with something it's all in and so I went with the H if you find an H for a good deal get it it's wonderful I mean the size of the body isn't really different as far as I know um it's really just all about the sensor so of course if I can get a bigger sensor I will uh, but the SD Quattro standard should be just I'm sure awesome. I wouldn't hesitate to buy that either. Um, does it need a lot of light? Yeah, it does. Like I said, I, I really do like to keep this at ISO 100, so that's where your fast lenses are going to be really helpful. Um, it does like light, uh, but I really, you know, being someone who shoots a lot of old cameras, like ISO 100 is my standard now. Like I'm super comfortable shooting in most circumstances at ISO 100. I do wish this had image stabilization that would make it like a little bit better. There are some lenses like the 24 to 70 full frame lens, I believe has image stabilization in the SA mount from Sigma, but you're just not going to get as wide as 18. And I really like to shoot wide. I'm kind of a, you know, it's like my happy place. So um, it's a trade-off I'm willing to make, but yeah, it needs, it, it likes light. Um, is the autofocus slow? Yep. Uh, that has a novel sensor, doesn't it? Curious to hear your thoughts on it in use. Yeah, I mean, I haven't shot the standard, like I said, so I can't really speak to that, but I'm super happy with the uh, APS-H sensor. How is manual focusing? Have you tried it with random old lenses? That is the biggest issue. Uh, you just can't adapt very much to this. And I actually don't have any M42 lenses, which is crazy because I have so many, so many odd lenses, uh, like Pentacon lenses and stuff like that, but I don't have any M42, so I have not tried to adapt anything and, uh, I'm not going to break my K-mount lenses to put it on this body because I still want to shoot my Pentax bodies. Um... How does the image quality compare quality-wise to the DP2 Merrill or the SD1 Merrill? Really interesting question. I have a DP2 Merrill. I love that camera. It is definitely different. Uh, first off, once you get the files into Sigma uh, Photo Pro, there are certain things you can do with the Quattro that you can't do with the Merrills that I do think make it, it you have less flexibility. That being said, the Merrill is probably a little bit sharper. Um, and it's just a totally different color reproduction. It's really interesting. I have read that skin tones are actually better on the Merrill. I haven't had a lot of, I, I just haven't done enough with my Merrill to really warrant. I love my Merrill to bring it like in my pocket for landscape photography when I'm traveling a little lighter. Uh, I just think it's a brilliant camera, but it is very different. And I do, maybe it's just because I've spent more time with the Quattro, but I do feel like my Quattro is more flexible um, and a little less harsh. I find the Merrill a little, um, it's, it's kind of strong and that works great for landscapes, but not so much with people, but I still love it. And um, so image quality wise, they're both exceptional. They're just slightly different, and I do think the Merrill is probably a little bit sharper, but, like, you're never going to say that the Quattro is a soft camera. So, different. But I, I, I'm really intrigued by the SD1 Merrill. I want to try that camera. Uh, I have a feeling I'll stick with my Quattro no matter what, because I just, I'm really vibing with it. But uh, I'm really interested to see how that would work with these lenses and all that, but um, I'm not going to sink another thousand dollars into a body okay uh blah, 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 blah. did you try adapting into any lenses yeah so i sort of covered that um it still goes for big bucks on ebay would you pick it over the same price new bayer x trans sensor that's a really great question 
it does go for the big bucks. So I have seen like if you kind of wait around, there are a few people who seem to relist these on eBay and sometimes they go down a little bit. They do they do claim a big price though, but the SD Quattro standard with the kit lens, the 30 millimeter, I think on B and H is like brand new 799 kitted out, which is pretty great. Um, I think for what you're getting for a brand new camera. So, I mean, you would hopefully be able to find something less expensive on the used market and I always buy used. So I think it's worth it. I actually much prefer it to the current Bayer sensor or even the X-Trans. Like I have a funny relationship with Fuji. I have a GFX 50S that I've been experimenting with. Like it's not mine to keep, but it isn't really doing it for me. I'm sorry. I know there are going to be so many people who are going to be like, what are you crazy? But like, I way prefer my Sigma. <laughs> so I'm keeping that one and not keeping the Fuji. Uh, how does it, what it, how does it hold? Do you like the grip? I love it. The ergonomics are awesome. The only thing I would say is that this dial here on the front is a little bit um, stiffer than I would like. I wish it was just a tiny bit looser because I think probably my hands are just a little smaller than, you know, maybe this was designed to accommodate. But I just love the Ergos. Like, it, it's a very, very good grip. Like, I love a good grip, and this one delivers on that front for sure. And is there a distinct difference between the DP Quattro... Is there a distinct difference with the DP Quattro's from a photographic perspective? Okay, so that's going back to like the DP one, two, three, and zero, um, which goes again back kind of to my other review. There is no difference. It's strictly focal length. Um, and the output from the H to those SDs will just be the same difference from the SD standard to the H. It's just a sensor size thing. Um, having, I'm actually, that's a good point. I have shot the SD or the DP2 Quattro and image wise, uh, I really don't see a difference. I haven't thought about it too, too much. I haven't pixel peeped, but that camera was outstanding and I just sold it to, to one of you out there and I hope you're loving it cause it's a freaking awesome camera. Um, but I don't really see, uh, an image quality difference. So like if you shot a DP instead of an SD, you're going to be in the same quattro camp and i think you're going to be totally fine um it's an interesting one though i hadn't really thought about that because i i kind of have shot the same sensor as the sd quattro um in my dp so both outstanding the uh lightroom compatibility like i said i use the x3 f files and then if i'm shooting sfd i'm doing the x3 i file which is like that massive seven image compilation format so they are not Lightroom compatible, but in my next video where I actually walk you through my post process, like in detail, you will see that I output a TIFF from Sigma Photo Pro and then I bring that into Lightroom and I do my final tweaks in Lightroom. Um, so it is a two-step process. Some of you are going to think I'm absolutely insane, but this is why I actually like it. I feel like it's a very creative, very artistic kind of like not that the output is necessarily creative or, or artistic, but as a process, it is just, it's just like film for me. It's like the old days of pulling out my, you know, my copy stand and my skier light box and like feeding my negatives in, but it's just a lot easier because there's like no extra hardware. There's no like setting up time. It's just time that I spend in my computer, which I, you know, I actually enjoy. So um, I do use Lightroom, but it's not compatible in the way you would imagine. You can shoot the DNG so and work directly through Lightroom. So we are going to draw the next camera now. Sophie, do you want to be my helper? Okay. 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 Here, here, I'll open it for you and you pick out one piece of paper. Okay. Oh, cool. She drew the Minolta 7000i, my father's film camera, a camera very dear to my heart and one that um, really needs to get reviewed more because it's a freaking awesome camera and right. no one talks about it.
right? Oh, she wants to draw another one. You have to wait two weeks to draw the next one. Okay, two weeks. Okay, we gotta shoot this one for two weeks. All right, so follow me on Instagram at one month two cameras to see shots from the Minolta 7000i over the course of the next two weeks, and I will be back with a review. High five. <laughs> Thank you, girl.